to provide the highest quality of nursing and midwifery care. Having been deemed fit for purpose and fit for practice, their learning process does not end after graduation, but they must continually seek to be lifelong learners, a concept I deeply believe in, in order to fulfill the requirements to provide high quality nursing and midwifery care. In a rapidly changing healthcare environment of today with the knowledge explosion, the impact of technology on healthcare, and of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, many nurses and midwives are increasingly called upon to work in expanded and specialist or advanced practice roles. In order to address the requirements of the pandemic, health institutions must have the capacity to respond with the right caliber of human resources, and in this case, specifically nurses, that are sufficient in quantity and possess the skills and capacities necessary to meet the needs of the population they serve in a timely, relevant, efficient, and effective manner to save lives. From a policy perspective, effective management of human resources will allow health systems to be adaptive and responsive in order to improve healthcare outcomes, rationalize the use of resources, and reduce the stress on staff. The COVID-19 pandemic is no exception to these challenges to ensure that we have an availability of health personnel that can meet the requirements needed at this particular time. The establishment of expanded services, also known as the parallel system by the government to deal with the pandemic has no doubt put further demands on human resources for health. It is therefore essential to ensure preparedness for response, enhance surge capacity, and ensure a sufficient supply of trained nurses that are more efficient and productive in offering the type of protection that is needed at this time, and also in order to take care of the patients under their care in critical situations. Critically ill patients present a completely different set of challenges for both the doctors as well as nurses. Such patients require constant monitoring, care, and support in order to be able to get back to health. In such situations, the role of critical care nursing becomes paramount to restoring the health of patients. PAHO has been successful in assisting in the, the supporting the training of a total of three cohorts, two of which were from the Trinidad and Tobago, and a third cohort from that's been sponsored by the sub-regional office. The two cohorts of Trinidad and Tobago comprise 25 registered nursing in each cohort, and the cohort sponsored by the sub-regional office, 32 registered nurses from seven other Caribbean countries, giving it a total of 82 trained RNs from eight countries. Of course, we could not do this without the collaboration and support of our sub-regional office, who were eager to see the program extended beyond the boundaries of Trinidad and Tobago. So I extend a special warm thank you to Dr. Benjamin Fertas, uh, our sub-regional advisor on human resources for health, and our Caribbean program coordinator, Mrs. Jessie Shutan, for their collaboration in this venture that has brought us to today to have the successful recognition of 82 RNs across eight countries of the Caribbean. These ICU nurses need to be critical thinkers as the role requires constant analysis of a patient's condition you need to be able to see the big picture and hone in on the best possible care and treatment for patients. Working well under pressure is also one of the many critical traits of an ICU nurse. The life of such an ICU nurse is an extremely taxing one, but also can be extremely rewarding. All nurses, of course, need to be reminded to ensure their own self-care is not neglected in such circumstances in which they will be working, since they will not be able to do their jobs effectively without looking after themselves. 
They know the skills that have been imparted by this course, which they have completed under the able leadership of Dr. Ocha and the team which he has put together, and the School of Nursing, St. Augustine, will certainly achieve these objectives. To the participants, I thank you for your willingness to undertake this course, for your passion, for your humanity and your caring, for your fellow citizens, and for being good team players, having the organizational skills and being able to venture into facing the difficult situations in which you would sometimes be working with critically ill people. Congratulations on completing this course. And to um, the faculty and the preceptors and all the others who have worked diligently, I also wish to extend my deep appreciation for your time and dedication in the midst of your very busy and difficult work that you sometimes have to do, especially during this time of the pandemic, when I'm sure you are called upon and stretched in many different directions. So again, I wish to extend congratulations to all. And of course, we could not have done all of this without the continuing support of our colleagues in the Ministry of Health who have worked closely with PAHO, who have endorsed the course. And really, I, I must always, always thank from the bottom of my heart our Minister of Health, who is so dedicated and, and cares so much for the health workers of this country, and who is always willing to support anything that improves the care of the people of Trinidad and Tobago, and with whom we are so grateful for his collaboration and ongoing support. So again, I thank you, and I congratulate everyone concerned. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Thank you very much, Dr. Wheeler, for your greetings and your congratulations to all those who are involved in the organization of this very important course, and your special congratulations to those who participated and completed. Thank you very much. I'd like to now call on Dr. Benjamin Puertas, the Human Resource for Health Sub-Regional Advisor, PAHO WHO. Dr. Puertas. Good morning to all of you. In behalf of the Pan American Health Organization, and in particular, Ms. Jessie Shutane, the PAHO coordinator of the sub regional program, I want to first salute all my colleague uh, panelists, health and academic authorities, participants, and faculty. We really appreciate the opportunity of uh, being able to share a few words uh, with you all. And uh, Dr. Wheeler already mentioned some of the very important issues about uh, human resources for health, more in particular nowadays with this uh, pandemic that is affecting all of us. The need, of, uh, or the need for uh, human resources for health that are appropriate, available, and qualified is huge nowadays, not only at the global, but also at the national level. And we see challenges in training of human resources for health around the world. The Pan American Health Organization is uh, really focusing in improving the learning capacities and training throughout the Caribbean node and the virtual campus of public health of human resources for health in the Caribbean. But we need to move along with the situation and the scenario that we're, we're all facing nowadays. We see more and more webinars, training courses with different uh, uh, alternatives, and we need to move on along with the learning solutions that are going to give us the best opportunity to reach our target population. We need to have courses that are engaging, dynamic, and with the participation of all the people who really need those type of uh, courses. I was uh, very proud to be involved in the organization and uh, from the sub-regional program, we supported the Caribbean cohort of nurses who participated in the course. I was very pleased and I would say impressed to see the combination of online and face-to-face -face activities. When I read through the program and the proposal, I was a bit uh, hesitant, how are we going to make it during the time of a pandemic? 
So I have to really congratulate the University of West Indies and uh, the Faculty of Nursing for achieving this, to be able to combine an online course with activities online, with face-to-face -face training, not anywhere, but in the critical care units in those countries that participated in the, in the course. That's something really important because that is how we need to start facing the future. We have to accept that online training is going to be there and in, in increase for in the future. So, so how do we incorporate other type of clinical training into online activities? The introductory critical care nursing course gave us some of those ideas, and that's why we see important to systematize the experience and share it with other colleagues and other uh, academic uh, entities. Uh, I'm impressed also by the uh, participation of you, the nurses who made it possible, and who were able to combine those online activities with real work in the critical care units. That coordination was really important, and I also have to congratulate the faculty for being able uh, to do that at the critical care setting. I want to thank the University of West Indies, in particular Dr. Oscar Ocho, or Pajo Country Office in Trinidad and Tobago, in particular Dr. Erika Wheeler. She comes from the Human Resources for Health uh, uh, background, so she understands the importance of capacity building and training. And Dr. Paul Edwards, with whom we have been coordinating not only this, but many other activities uh, to improve uh, human resources for health in the, in the Caribbean. You took the initiative to make this course available to nurses, not only of Trinidad and Tobago, but also of the Caribbean, and we thank you for that opportunity. The HRH unit at the sub-regional program in, uh, for the Caribbean. We are also in other activities with uh, the University of West Indy because we think that collaborations are going to make us stronger. We are now in the process of completing the organization of a diploma in health policy and health systems with the UWE here in Cape Hill in Barbados. And so we will continue this type of cooperation and collaboration, and uh, I'm sure that will make us stronger and will allow us to produce better courses and better training for all the HRH in the Caribbean. Thank you very much to all of you, and I, again, uh, we congratulate you for completing this course, and we will be very happy to keep supporting this and other type of initiatives. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Portas, for those greetings and for highlighting the importance of capacity building. Thank you very much. At this point in time, I'd like to call on Professor Terence Simongo, the Dean of the Faculty of Medical Sciences, to bring his greetings. Dr. Simongo, please. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> uh, members of the head table, it is a distinct pleasure for me to be here. And of course, if I single out my own Minister of Health, I trust you won't mind, but great admiration uh, for the work that the Ministry of Health has been doing in this uh, COVID pandemic. And many thanks to PAHO for the support that they have given us. The Faculty of Medical Sciences has worked hand in hand with PAHO and with the Ministry of Health, our vet school, our Preclinical Sciences Department have been there with the diagnosis. Our clinicians have been there on the wards. But today we are here to celebrate the achievement of, if I'm not mistaken, 30 or 40 young people who, at the behest of the Ministry of Health, have come forward to support the country in intensive care nursing. And I am very grateful for the agility that the School of Nursing showed and continues to show in responding to the needs of the country. This is not the first time they've done it. They've done it with sickle cell and oncology nursing and several other areas. But one of the things that we try to do at the university, probably over the last five years, 
because of the cost of running courses, is to run them as uh, projects so that once we have saturated the market, we move on to the next need that the country has. And I can say in this regard that we have worked well with the Ministry of Health in speaking to those needs. It was quite a task to do, to come up with the curriculum and to, to get it done uh, very quickly, given the rigor with which the university approaches giving these types of courses. But Dr. Ocho is proving himself quite adept at overcoming obstacles and has brought great leadership to the school in doing so. So I think that when you look at intensive care nursing and the challenges that it brings in practice, as Dr. Wheeler was saying earlier, where the, the practitioner has to concentrate all the time right through their shifts, sometimes 12-hour shifts they work, and virtually minute-to-minute -minute management of a patient, and usually one nurse to one patient. And the smallest change sometimes they will need to contact their doctors about because you can never tell which way to go. And to be able to train these young people, as the school has done, is really a remarkable feat. And I can't say how grateful I am that we have now achieved this milestone. Again, I would like to thank the Ministry of Health for their vision in seeing the need for this. And the Minister in particular for the leadership he has brought to the Ministry. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Professor C. Mongol, for those greetings and also highlighting the critical role that the University of West Indies plays in Trinidad and Tobago and also the Caribbean in building capacity, especially in this occasion for our nurses. I now invite the Honorable Minister Terence D.L. Singh, the Minister of Health, Trinidad and Tobago, to provide us with the feature address. Minister D.L. Singh, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Richard. I hope I'm being heard. Dr. Erica Wheeler, Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization representative from Darren Tobago Country Office. And in my salutation to Dr. Wheeler, I would like to say that we have more than a professional relationship now because we have communicated so often. I consider her friend and colleague, and I thank her for working with me. But as I have said publicly, publicly once, I also thank her for putting up with me <laughs> because things are not as they should be. So Dr. Vila, uh, my dear friend, thank you very much. Dr. Paul Edwards, the chairman, of this morning's proceedings. Thank you very much. I see my salutations with Ms. Jessie Shutan. I don't know if she is there, but Jessie, let me say to you, I, I miss our real life meetings. I, I miss your infectious smile. I miss your personality. If you are there, I miss you. Dr. Benjamin Perka, um, whom I just saw for the first time this morning, Human Resource and Health Advisor, PAHU WHO Office. Thank you very much for your support. My friend and colleague again, Dr. Oscar Noel Ocho, most extraordinaire. Dr. Ocho, you should take a bow. He's the director of the University of the West Indies School of Nursing, lovingly called Yui Song. 82 participants from eight countries and graduates Represented this morning, I believe, by Ms. Tiffany Basel from Dominica. I congratulate you, and these are my words. You have seemed to have been chosen to be the valedictorian for today's proceedings. It means if you were chosen to represent 82 peers, it means, Ms. Basel, that you have demonstrated qualities of leadership and critical thinking. And I thank you for accepting the honor of speaking on behalf of all these graduates. Other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
Today is a day of celebration. Today is a positive day. Today is a good day. But today we stand face to face still with an enemy that threatens to derail our economy, challenge our education system, spread sickness, disrupt our mental stability, and at its root, take the lives of our loved ones. For almost one year, we have kept this enemy at bay. We have managed it. But now we are pushing back and slowly begin to take full steps towards normal. We no longer seek to manage the enemy, but as I am now changing the conversation, we are now seeking to control it. Moving from management to control. While many of us have been working arduously every day to ensure that all of us are able to reclaim our way of life, there are dedicated groups of persons who have gone beyond the call of duty and must be singled out to do this day of celebration. They have been pushing back quietly and honorably against this enemy COVID-19. One such group is made up of our bases across the region. As the Ministry of Health, we greatly value our nurses and the contributions that these phenomenal professionals make to the overall delivery of quality care throughout the public health sector, and may I say also the private health sector. Thus, I am especially pleased to address you at this virtual certification ceremony for the participation for the participants of the introductory course in critical care nursing. Every battle needs the support of allies if one is to succeed. I must also thank the Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization, and Professor Terence Mongol at the University of the West Indies for leading this initiative. Dr. Wheeler and Professor Simongal have been allies staunch allies with the Ministry of Health in this fight. I value your friendship, I value your advice, and I value your camaraderie. Margaret Harvey, PhD RN, and Chamberlain Campus President once said, when a person decides to become a nurse, they make the most important decision of their lives they choose to dedicate themselves to the care of others. And this is applicable to all our nurses and today to the 82 nurses of spanning eight countries in the region. Indeed, it must be said that nurses are not mere healthcare professionals, but nurses hold significant roles at the forefront of our nation's welfare. Nurses have the unique opportunity to influence positive change in a way members of the public perceive the hospital, health centers, state quarantine and step-down facilities, and the COVID-19 vaccine. Nurses have a major impact on the standard of care experienced by the patient and by extension, the confidence in that care by the national community. Look at the words we are using this morning. Critical, care, confidence. I speak directly to our nurses now. Please know that we care about your welfare. We want you to be protected. Additionally, you are essential, and that is why the decision was taken to ensure that those faced with the highest risk and the highest exposure in the battle receive the first protective armor the COVID-19 vaccine food. I urge you to take advantage of this opportunity. And I must again thank the Prime Minister and people of Barbados for making available 2,000 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine, which will vaccinate 1,000 healthcare workers. I am told that the figure right now is around 930. So we have already exhausted close to 1,000 and we will keep the other 1,000 for their second shot. As a result of this long-standing battle against the COVID-19 pandemic, we have become even more reliant on our nurses to provide their skills in high dependency units in response to the changing needs of patients, as alluded to by Dr. Wheeler. 
That being the case, this program of study was instrumental in providing our nurses with contemporary training in the administration of critical care to the COVID-19 positive patients presenting at our public health facility for medical treatment. That would again critical. Our nursing professionals are now in the best position to prepare for changes within the health sector, learn from each other, and propose new approaches to improving the healthcare system in Trinidad and Tobago because COVID-19 will change the way we practice medicine. It will change the way we provide nursing support. The knowledge and experience gained during this course will be invaluable as we plan not only for this pandemic, but for future pandemics that we may face with. This is not the end. When we control COVID, there will be future pandemic that we have to contend with. The Ministry of Health is committed to the continuous training of staff at all levels to ensure that the services we offer to the public are of the highest standard. Even before we discovered a single case of COVID-19 in Trinidad and Tobago, the general managers of nursing and human resources at our regional health authorities mobilized their staff from various units to commence training of all their staff. The training addressed infection prevention and control principles, policies and procedures, and the donning and doffing of PPE in preparation for the care of management of COVID-19 positive patients. Approximately 150 registered nurses representing all of our five RHCs throughout Trinidad and Tobago were trained in the care and management of ventilated patients requiring care at intensive care units. This decision was taken in early 2020 in anticipation of a surge of COVID-19 cases. The intention was to ensure that there were sufficient numbers of ICU trained nurses available. This workshop for which we have graduates to do and represented by nurse battle on intensive care management was designed by the Chief Nursing Officer, National Administrator, Administrator Nursing Services, CEO, CNO of the Ministry of Health, Trinidad and Tobago. I want to thank Nurse Betty and Pilgrim at this point in time. In collaboration with Dr. Alan Suraj, now deceased unfortunately, of the Epsom and St. Helier University, NHS Trust, United Kingdom, and was conducted by the University of Southern Caribbean. You can see how many entities came together, whole of society approach. Additionally, the University of the West Indies School of Nursing, my colleague and friend, Dr. Uchu, in collaboration with Paho WHO, my colleague and friend, Dr. Wheeler, also trained a number of RNs from each RNA. Each RHE under a different team. An investment in training of our healthcare professionals can only result in a workforce that comprises highly skilled professionals that are able to mitigate any health related threat against the national community. Training programs have also proven to aid in the development and enhancement of professional competencies among healthcare workers. Based on this principle, our ministry is passionate about professional development and the benefits to be gained by our staff, our customers, partners, and stakeholders. Programs such as this introductory course and the keyword again, critical care nursing, are expected to help our nurses meet national, regional, and international standards of preparation in several key areas. The training also offers nurses the opportunity to add to their skill set. Continuing education is important, thereby increasing motivation and job retention so that they can take on the additional responsibility while supporting their own career progression. There is also expected to be an increase in overall productivity 
and quality of output. As I close, allow me to reiterate that the successful control of COVID-19 requires that our frontline healthcare workers possess the tools or the ammunition to win this battle. Very specific types of training and qualifications are required to perform a number of emerging roles because things will change. Training is a crucial aspect of our nurses' professional development. Training ensures that our staff acquire the right skills to operate effectively and legally. Congratulations to all 83 nurses from across seven Caribbean countries on completing this program of training. Thank you for working with your various ministries of health to achieve the standard of operations that we have set for the healthcare of our nation. We would be lost without the continued effort put forward by persons within the nursing profession. We will be lost. We will be rudderless. As I close, I once again commend Paho WHO and the University of the West Indies for hosting training programs such as these and your willingness to collaborate with various government and non-governmental entities to achieve superior care for all. As I leave you, I leave you for the day because today I have the parliament to uh, deal with in an hour or so. But I leave you with congratulations. I leave you with words of encouragement. This too will pass. And I thank all participants. May you have a blessed day and may God bless each and every one of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister D.L. Singh, for those words highlighting the critical roles that nurses play in care as it relates to patients. Thank you very, very much for those words. We'll move right along with the agenda. And now I'd like to call on Dr. Oscar Noel Ocho to provide an overview of the program. Dr. Ocho, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Edward. I am very pleased to present a, a background to this short introduction to Critical Care Nursing Corps, which was done collaboratively with PAHO WHO. Uh, we initially got a request from the Ministry of Health to develop a short course in critical care nursing in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. When that request came, I immediately reached out to my extremely supportive Dean, Professor Karen Simankal, who asked that fellow academics from across various schools and departments of the Faculty of Medical Sciences, we bring our collective technical expertise together to prepare this program. This proposal was shared with Pago WHO Trinidad as well as the sub-regional office. And Pago expressed an interest, and as a result, it gave birth to the sponsorship of all participants, all 82 participants who completed the program, but it was 85 persons who were originally sponsored. The rationale for this program, as was highlighted by all the presenters before me, is that registered nurses play a critical role in the delivery of high-level care to patients especially in the critical care environment. 
with the emerging new COVID-19 infection and the resultant complications associated with the infection, registered nurses must then be prepared to function at a higher level within the critical care clinical environment. So how then were we to pull together in a very short period of time uh, a course that would be meaningful and responsive at least? What we did then is that we provided a hybrid of both series and the clinical experiences uh, for the participants uh, with a strong emphasis on the development of their clinical competence. The program was structured in such a way that it extended over a four-week period. In week one, we focused on introduction to critical care data infection prevention and control, as well as virology, diagnostics, and management of infection. In week two, we focused on respiratory assessment, respiratory dysfunction, and respiratory management since the fall mark of COVID-19 was the respiratory challenges that patients would experience. But notwithstanding that, in week three, we broadened the participants' appreciation of the critical care environment, bearing in mind that there are other systemic complications that could arise. So we focused in week three on renal neurological and cardiac dysfunction and management, as well as the ethical and psychosocial support of the patient in ICU. And we four, they spend the entire five-day period in, on a clinical attachment to the ICU in their respective countries. What made this program successful as it was, had a lot to do with how the program was structured and delivered. So in weeks one to three, we provided them with the theoretical foundation on a Monday to Thursday afternoon. And classes were from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. In so doing, there was an uninterrupted uh, approach to nurses being able to function in their clinical areas and yet still be able to access the training. So that was a win-win for both the region and the ministry, as well as the university and faculty. On a Friday, what we did is that we provided them with exposure to the clinical area and where they were prospected, looking at developing their skills iteratively. And of course, we call the 5D clinical attachment. The good thing about this course as well, the theoretical component was delivered virtually. So there was no physical meeting, and we, it meant that we were on the button as it relates to transformative education for health development. At the end of the course, there was a theoretical evaluation. The recruitment of participants from Trinidad and Tobago, we PAHO collaborated with the ministry, bearing in mind that PAHO was the sponsor for the scholars who are being presented today. And the ministry then communicated with the chief executive officers and the general managers nursing 
of the regional health authority to allow us to get the participants from the Caribbean uh, territory perspective. This took a lot of networking. So we have the sub-regional office then reaching out to the Paho country offices who then reached out to the Ministry of Health, who then reached out to the hospital and nursing administrators, and therefore the participant uh, list was redirected back up the chain before it ended up at the University of the West Indies. So this really showed that recruiting the participants was really a strong collaborative experience. Of the participants from Trinidad and Tobago, of the 50 participants, 49 took up the offer because one participant had comorbidities and regretfully denied the offer, and it was too late for a replacement. We had seven from Eastern Region, 14 from North Central Region, 10 from Northwest Region, seven from Southwest, and six from Tobago. In the Caribbean territories, which was originally for five countries, and eventually one country, Dominica, decided they wish to get on board. So Dominica sent six participants, Antigua and Barbuda five, Barbados two, Belize five, Guyana five, and Suriname had the most nine participants of the Caribbean territory, giving us a grand total of 82 participants. This could not have been possible without the invaluable support of my colleagues from paraclinical sciences, clinical medical, and clinical surgical sciences, including Professor Carrington, Dr. Dale Ventor, Dr. Stanley Kiddick, Professor Sidaraman, Dr. Harkap Singh, Dr. Um, Stefan, who was from Wayne State University in the U.S., an ICU specialist nurse, Dr. Lorna Merritt Charles, Dr. Sate Sakamuri, Dr. Naveen Sitaran, Dr. Katija Khan, and Ms. Rahina Red, who is a head nurse of the critical care unit at, at EWMSC. Our preceptors did a phenomenal job and they were from the, the six countries, the seven countries that are identified, including Ms. Bridgewater, Ms. Trotman, Ms. Bennett, Ms. Abraham, Ms. Persad Duncan, Ms. Adin, Ms. Watson, Ms. Malone, Ms. Red, Ms. Kobe, Williams, Jack, Ms. Charles, Wilson, and William. I just want to end with four summary statements from participants who spoke about the value of this program to their experience. One participant said, today I had six patients and three was critical. My observation skills and efficiency was improved. I felt good. Another said, I can view the patient in a more holistic manner as I can now have a better understanding of prescribed treatment and lab reading. Another said, nursing duties will certainly be impacted positively by the knowledge gain. I don't work at ICU, but will request that I be rotated there at least once a week to sharpen my skills and knowledge. And this final participant that I've selected really summarized in a really the quality of this experience. After this training, I will be able to give holistic care to all my patients. 
I'm no longer intimidated by the ICO and equipment there. I can now say I'm very confident in myself. And the care I will be giving to any patient. And because of this, I will be applying to pursue the critical care course there in my country. I'll also be teaching my colleagues. What are a testament of the invaluable contribution we have made to capacity building in human resource for health? I cannot thank my colleagues from Pago, Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Wheeler, Dr. Edwards, as well as the sub-regional office, Mrs. Shutin, as well as Dr. Puerta, my dean. I can't thank him enough. And the heads of the various departments who coalesced and supported us in making this a reality. The next step for us is to offer the full master in critical care nursing. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Ocho. I will take the privilege here of saying thank you for your leadership, for your ability to collaborate, because that has certainly resulted with all the other team players in making this a success. Um, thank you very much for the overview. It provided a detailed insight of what it really takes to develop, to organize, and to impart such a critical course. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to invite the slide presentation, please. Go ahead, Ricardo. Thank you. I'll call the names Ashley Rock, Jem Mahon, Andrea Caesar, Sharifa Harris, Akila Kapil, Natasha Van Dyke, Afila Williams. Alana William, Candace Jane, Collins, Collins Lloyd, Tiffany Brazil, Brazil of Brazil, Tripper Prosper, Mary Bonnet, Kelma. Sabarosi, Samantha Tony, Vanessa Grovenfeld, Angela Davy Bahadur, 
Simon Edward, Diana Wadikin, Wadikin, Meredith Cameron, Lorraine Demer, Renia Grendel, Graciela Soti Tejo, Irodoho, La Donna Noriega, Alicia Canrose, Dennis Ibellamy, Kimberly Sam, Alison Ransom, Melissa Stewart, Lizzie Richardson, Sherian Samuel, Anne Marie Edwards, Avalon Bailey, Louise Ronin, Ricky, Rick, Rebecca Friday, Elizabeth George, Natalie Brathwaite, Rene Sel Lamorel, Summer Hall, Nikisha Charles, Patricia Thomas O, Brittany Batiste, Trisha Samuel, Abigail Reed, Shalisa Gadar, Dominique Mitchell, Simone Henry Hunt, Olive Isaac, Shavon Jack, Pat- Patrice Deonorai, Jonica Thompson, Debbie Zima, Candice Barak, Carrie Ann Shady, Karen Stewart Phillips, Nalini Emmerich, Sabatri Ramna Medina, Susan Brown, Polana Dipshan, Marcia Koo, Hazel and Superville, Marlene Alfred, Akila Samuel, Karen Guy, Avalon Lee, Renetta Holder, Anna Chapman, Natasha Pierre, Rachel Bradshaw, Charlene Budram, Euphemia Salazar, Mark Joseph, Shoba Singh, and that's the list of our participants. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Ocha and your team for compiling all that. I know that some of the challenges that existed, but thanks for that. It was a great moment to recognize the participants uh, within the challenges of COVID-19 and having to have an online ceremony. Thank you very much for all the efforts. I think we've all been waiting for this moment on the program to hear from one of the esteemed participants, to hear her perspective. And I welcome Ms. Tiffany Basil, the participant from Dominica, to bring those words. Thank you very much, Nurse Tiffany. Pleasant good morning to all the representatives of the Pan-American Health Organization, 
the government officials. Sorry, one second. Nurse Tiffany, are you able to put on your video, please? Thank you. A pleasant good morning to all the participants, representatives of the Pan American Health Organization, government officials from Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Oscar Ocho, and the other members of the University of the West Indies St. Augustine Campus, Trinidad and Tobago, clinical instructors from the various OECS islands, presenters, and to the lucky beneficiaries of this program, my colleagues and fellow regional participants. I use the word lucky because it was indeed an honor to be selected to be part of such an amazing educational experience, a well-thought and well-constructed learning venture. I want to extend heartfelt thanks to the coordinators and organizers for the initiative to develop the Introduction to Critical Care Nursing course in the format that they did. Continuing education is something I have always been very passionate about, and I feel it is of vital importance in the medical field. It is necessary for maintaining competence, provision of evidence-based care, and it directly results in improvement of nursing activity and thus improve the healthcare in the society. Personally, this course challenged my critical thinking skills, and I can honestly say that it made me a better nurse, a better critical thinker, and a better patient advocate. As Dr. Ocho mentioned, this course was four weeks long and touched on many different aspects of critical care, namely communication, assessment and monitoring in the ICU, triaging, diagnostics, microbiology and sepsis, infection control, epidemiology, respiratory dysfunction and ventilator use, suctioning, pharmacodynamics, interpretation of ECGs, blood results, renal dysfunction and replacement therapy, neurological assessment, fluid manage th management therapy, ethical considerations, and psychosocial support for the critically ill. I think that all of the topics presented on were of significant importance, and I am sure that my colleagues can agree when I say that they helped foster deeper critical thinking and allowed us to link theory to practice. The structure of the course was very unique in that it allowed for direct incorporation of the information learned in the clinical area. This type of learning strategy allows learners to absorb material better and be able to apply it with a rational behind every action. Acquiring skills and learning is an ongoing process. And so, in addition to obtaining degree programs, we must never underestimate the ability of short courses such as these to serve as brilliant refreshers and enrich our skills and knowledge. The COVID-19 pandemic has made realization more clear by driving home the need for knowledge expansion in critical care. The training provided a much needed perspective on the changing face of critical care and the importance of education. I want to single out the presentation on respiratory dysfunction and mechanical ventilation, which I am of the opinion was of great importance and quite fitting amidst the current pandemic. The presenters were very knowledgeable on the subject matter. I am sure that we will never be intimidated by ventilators again. The level of interaction, real life stories, and practical examples truly enhance the learning experience. As a region, we have done very well in managing the pandemic thus far and that includes education of staff on managing critical COVID positive patients. The knowledge acquired has served as an eye opener. I am comforted by the fact that should a matter arise in Dominica, the nurses who participated in this course have increased knowledge on how to deal with critical situations and function effectively in an ICU. I truly wish the program was longer, but the information acquired was substantial and can go a long way to the development of critical care in Dominica. This has paved the way for the expansion of knowledge in critical care in the Caribbean. Once again, I want to extend sincere gratitude to the Pan American Health Organization and the University of the West Indies St. Augustine Campus, Trinidad and Tobago for this opportunity. And I really hope to see more like it in the future. I want to end with a quote by Kofi Annan which I hope will serve as an ongoing motivation for all the participants. It reads, open quote, knowledge is power. 
information is liberating. Education is the premise of progress in every society and in every family. End quote. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nurse Tiffany, for sharing your perspectives. And I would want to think the perspectives of many of the other participants who was part of this introductory course. Thank you very, very much. Very eloquent. Now we move to the other agenda item that highlights definitely the challenges of nurses, some of them who have worked or are currently working in ICU, as well as those who may never have been exposed to critical care before within a structured environment as such, and to share about some of the collaboration it took. We have developed a video that has been an ongoing activity through many versions. There are many individuals who have played critical roles in the development of this video. So today we take this opportunity within the many challenges we had of not being able to travel to some of the places to get the very best videos as such. But I think what is critical here is the message of this important tool, one for advocacy, one for the showing of the donors, the demonstration to the donors of how some of their financial resources were utilized. And I'm certain this video will have many other uses as well. Aubrey, can we kindly see the video, please? Over to you.
as in life, every good thing comes to an end. I want to say thanks to those who provided words of greeting this morning, Dr. Wheeler, Dr. Puertas, and Professor Simongo, for the feature address of the Honorable Minister Terence D.L. Singh, for Dr. Ocha, who provided an overview of the program, and especially Nurse Tiffany Basil, who provided that participant perspective. I think we were blessed today by being able to congratulate those who participated in a course that will have far-reaching benefits. So thanks to those who were on the program. Thanks to the organizers and all who had input in the development of the course. And also thanks to those who organized today's activity. There was a lot of input needed for us to be able to present this activity today. I want to close by saying the following. Nurses are essential members of the health workforce, and thus it is critical to ensure that nursing education presents them to respond to the needs of health systems and to work collaboratively in interprofessional teams. Interprofessional education has the potential to transform nursing education given that it promotes the development of collaborative practice attitudes, knowledge and skills, and behaviors, ensuring that nursing educational programs adhere to the principles of transformative and interprofessional education will enhance the performance and productivity of qualified health professionals and result in improved care delivery. Nursing is surely one of the most respected professions in the world because of the selflessness, dedication, and hard work that is involved. Continue to empower with a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring. You have the potential to turn a life around. And therefore, once again, congratulations on your participation and completion of the introduction to critical care nursing. Today and in the future, continue to be safe and well. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> bye, bye, and thanks. Thanks. I have, I have a. <laughs>